we need to enhance coordinated global COVID-19 response and minimize the risk of cross-border virus transmission. Vaccination is our powerful weapon against COVID-19. I have stressed on many occasions the need to make vaccine a global public good and ensure vaccine accessibility and affordability in developing countries. Of pressing priority is to ensure the fair and equitable distribution of vaccines globally. China will strive to provide a total of 2 billion doses of vaccines to the world by the end of this year. In addition to donating 100 million US dollars to COVAX, China will donate 100 million doses of vaccines to other developing countries in the course of this year. China will continue to support and engage in global science-based origins tracing and stands firmly opposed to political maneuvering in whatever form. Second, we must revitalize the economy and pursue more robust, greener and more balanced global development. Development holds the key to people's well-being. Facing the severe shocks of COVID-19, we need to work together to steer global development towards a new stage of balanced, coordinated and inclusive growth. To this end, I would like to propose a global development initiative. Staying committed to development as a priority, we need to put development high on the global macro policy agenda, strengthen policy coordination among major economies, and ensure policy continuity, consistency and sustainability. We need to foster global development partnerships that are more equal and balanced, forge greater synergy among multilateral development operation, cooperation processes and speed up the implementation of the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, staying committed to a people-centered approach. We should safeguard and improve people's livelihoods and protect and promote human rights through development and make sure that development is for the people and by the people and that its fruits are shared among the people. We should continue our work so that the people will have a greater sense of happiness, benefit and security and achieve well-rounded development. Staying committed to benefits for all, we should care about the special needs of developing countries. We may employ such means as debt suspension and development aid to help developing countries, particularly vulnerable ones facing exceptional difficulties, with the emphasis on addressing unbalanced and inadequate development among and within countries. China will step up support for other developing countries in developing green and low carbon energy and will not build new coal-fired power projects abroad. Staying committed to results-oriented actions, we need to increase input in development, advance on a priority basis cooperation on poverty alleviation, food security COVID-19 response and vaccines, development financing, climate change and green development, industrialization, digital economy and connectivity among other areas, and accelerate implementation of the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development so as to build a global community of development with a shared future. China has pledged an additional 3 billion US dollars of international assistance in the next three years to support developing countries in responding to COVID-19 and promoting economic and social recovery. Third, we must strengthen solidarity and promote mutual respect and win-win cooperation in conducting 
international relations. A world of peace and development should embrace civilizations of various forms and must accommodate diverse paths to modernization. Democracy is not a special right reserved to any individual country, but a right for the people of all countries to enjoy. Recent developments in the international situation show once again that military intervention from the outside and so-called democratic transformation entail nothing but harm. We need to advocate peace, development, equity, justice, democracy and freedom, which are the common values of humanity and reject the practice of forming small circles or zero-sum games. Differences and problems among countries, hardly avoidable, need to be handled through dialogue and cooperation on the basis of equality and mutual respect. One country's success does not have to mean another country's failure, and the world is big enough to accommodate common development and progress of all countries. We need to pursue dialogue and inclusiveness over confrontation and exclusion. We need to build a new type of international relations based on mutual respect, equity, justice and win-win cooperation, and do the best we can to expand the convergence of our interests and achieve the biggest synergy possible. The Chinese people have always celebrated and striven to pursue the vision of peace, amity and harmony. China has never and will never invade or bully others or seek hegemony. China is always a builder of world peace, contributor to global development, defender of the international order and provider of public goods. China will continue to bring the world new opportunities through its new development. Fourth, we must improve global governance and practice true multilateralism. In the world, there is only one international system, i.e. the international system with the United Nations at its core. There is only one international order, i.e. the international order underpinned by international law, and there is only one set of rules, i.e. the basic norms governing international relations underpinned by the purposes and principles of the UN Charter. The UN should hold high the banner of true multilateralism and serve as the central platform for countries to jointly safeguard universal security, share development achievements, and chart the course for the future of the world. The UN should stay committed to ensuring a stable international order, increasing the representation and say of developing countries in international affairs, and taking the lead in advancing democracy and rule of law in international relations. The UN should advance in a balanced manner, work in all the three areas of security development and human rights. It should set common agenda, highlight pressing issues and focus on real actions, and see to it that commitments made by all parties to multilateralism are truly delivered. Mr. President, the world is once again at a historical crossroads. I'm convinced that the trend of peace, development and advancement for humanity is irresistible. Let us bolster confidence, jointly address global threats and challenges, and work together to build a community with a shared future for mankind and a better world for all. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the People's Republic of China for the statement just made.